Let's now solve some questions on this section. Which two of the following can affect and be part of test planning? The budget limitations, the test objectives, test log, failure rates, use cases, select two options. So the budget is a part of test planning and the test objectives are part of test planning. But test logs and failure rates may be used in test summary report and use cases of course are not part of test planning. Which of the following is a characteristic of a metrics-based approach for test estimation? Budget, which was used by a previous similar test project, overall experience collected in interviews with test managers, overall estimate agreed with the developers, average of calculations collected from business experts. In order to know the correct answer, search for the answer that has a specific number, okay, a specific value. So the first answer says the budget that was used in the previous project. So this is a specific number. For example, we used $20,000 or anything. This is a specific number. But all the other choices are talking about some estimate, some average of calculations, some overall experience, but not a specific number. In this example, we have seven requirements and we want to create the test execution schedule based on the dependencies between the requirements. So let's look at our diagram here. Let's search for the requirements that is not dependent on any other requirement. So here we find that R1 is not dependent on any other requirement. R3 and R2 both depend on R1. We can choose any one of them. No. Why? Because if we look at R2, R2 is inside this module, this big module, which consists of R2, R5, and R6. So R2 needs some data or dependent on R1 and R3. There is an arrow from R1 to R2, and also there is an arrow from R3 to R2. So in order to execute R2, we must execute both R1 and R3. So at the beginning, we perform R1, then R3, and then we go to R2. After R2, we cannot go to R4 or R7. Why? Because this arrow comes from the module which consists of R2, R5, and R6 and goes to R4. So in order to execute R4, we must finish R2, R5, and R6. So the correct order is R1, then R3, then R2, then R5 and R6, then R4 and R7. You are working in a team of testers who are all writing test cases. You have noticed that there is a significant inconsistency with the length and amount of detail in the different test cases. Where should the test case guidelines have been documented? We said that the amount of documentation should be written inside the test plan. So we should write in the test plan how should the test case be written and how should the bug report be written. Consider the following test cases that are used to test an accounting system. We have five test cases. Each one of them has a dependency and priority. The ideal case is executing the test cases based on the priority. But like we said, if a high priority test case depends on a low priority test case, we must execute the low priority test case first. So let's search for the test case that does not have any dependency, that is not dependent on any other test case. Test case number one, dependency is none. It does not depend on any other test case. So we should begin with test case number one. Then test case number two and three depend on test case number one. Here we choose the test case that has a higher priority, which is test case number three. It has a priority of two. Test case number two has a priority of three. The order of priority is always one, two, three, four. So if we have a test case with a priority one and a test case with priority 10, the test case that has priority one has a higher priority than the test case that has priority 10. So we begin with test case number one, then test case number three, then test case number two. Then we have test case four and five. Five depends on four. And four depends on two, which we already executed. So we execute test case number four, then test case number five.